Welcome back to WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are taking the Maryland Crab Cake Tour out on the road all week long. I'll be giving away Maryland lottery tickets. we got some Raven scratch-offs. Uh, my birthday crab cake is going to be at Fadley's. Our dear, dear partners will be downtown at uh, Lexington Market on Friday. Got great guests. There. Dot Ramos is coming by. Felicia Porter's coming by. Uh, my dude Tom Cole's coming by. Damie's giving me crab cakes and doing fried oysters. We're going to do it upright. Uh, it is Friday. It is all brought to you by our friends at Goodwill and of course the holidays and uh, and and Halloween here I'm doing my David Bowie thing even though I'm doing my Tony Gwynn thing here for baseball right now if you're watching that on the video cam and of course our friends at Window Nation you buy two you get two free 866 90 Nation do what I did it's uh it's been lovely the last eight and a half weeks uh, w- with new windows. All right, uh, we love to do some community stuff here. Uh, my dear friend Karen always sets up great stories, but this is a local story. Uh, I've had Jeff Kendrick, Jeffrey Kendrick, on uh, in, in the past uh, in regard to McVet, and this is a local group helping veterans. And here today, and you know, my name's Nestor Aparicio, so when I get guests who have unique names, Sarita uh, Spencer's here. She is the director of development and community engagement. I'm getting everything right here. And Adabali Buford, who is the interim executive director of things going on. we got a local organization doing local things. And I know I've had some deeper conversations about veterans because I have veterans in my family. I did not serve. I thought I was going to run for office at one point. That would have been my serving. But uh, my father-in-law is a, a Vietnam vet along the line. My uncle, Korea, the whole deal. My grandfather, World War II. Uh, so I, I, stepping up for veterans, I probably don't do enough here at Baltimore Positive for these sorts of things. So uh, Adabali and Sarita, I want to give you guys some open oxygen to tell me and my audience a little bit about your organization because um, you're different spokespeople. I was getting used to, to, uh, to, to Jeffrey over there before. <laughs> We wanted to tag team you this morning and give you some double great information about our organization. Well, I love hearing that. I love education and training. So we're going to start off with Mr. Buford. Outstanding. (laughs) Well, first of all, Nesta, I've got to say I am duly impressed. Like name pronunciation with a name like Adobalia is like over the top for the first time you're getting it right. Look at you. Well, your parents loved you like my dad loved me, made me a Nestor, you know. Now, hey, listen, now that the the pitcher from the Yankees, right, Nestor, like it's (laughs) it's become a – there are Nestor shirts out there. I've seen them. So there (laughs) maybe if there's an Adabali that plays linebacker for the Ravens 10 years from now, you know what I mean? Like the name could be everywhere, right? Listen, man, after all of those schoolyard fights with these kind of names, you can best believe we've earned it. So absolutely. <laughs> I'm looking Can't forward believe, to it. You, won't, you don't want me to admit to you. Nestor the long year Christmas donkey came out when I was Listen. nine. You can Google it, right? Listen. So, you know, I had all that going on. Your organization, local, yes. where are y'all based here? Because uh, I know you help people throughout the region. But, I mean, you're, you're literally right here, right in Baltimore. Absolutely. We're located right here downtown at 301 North High Street. We're right behind the main post office downtown. And it, again, thank you for giving us the platform, right? Because as an Army veteran myself, one of the things that we always talk about is the need for a space that you can come and get the services that you need after you transition off of active duty, just knowing that you have a place to ha- call home and McVet is that place, right? So we've been in existence since 1993. So next year we'll be celebrating 30 years, you know, of providing this work in the Baltimore space. So thank you for having us, man. It's um, like I said, it's, it's more of a mission than it is an actual job. You know, we provide housing, we provide behavioral health, we provide education and training. We just got a myriad of services that we have right downtown. And all you have to have is having served the United States Armed Services and come through these doors and we'll help you. And we've served over 14,000 veterans since we've been into in existence. Yeah. Um, McVet is a national nonprofit organization that happens to be located in Baltimore, Maryland. Absolutely. All right. So I just, I travel a lot, right? I get around the country and I've seen the homeless mm-hmm. issues. I spent 10 days in Los Angeles at the Super Bowl earlier this year. And I, I lived out there. This is where I lived. If you're watching out, I, I lived at the Harbor the last 20 years. We recently moved this past year out into the sticks where we have squirrels and, and rabbits and cool things to, uh, to look at and birds out the window and whatnot. But uh, traversing the country and seeing just encampments and homeless folks and and people that don't have enough, but so many times that sign they're holding up. I I think of the fellow that was down on, you know, that I saw every week down by the cathedral, you know, when I would walk up Charles street through, through Mount Vernon, uh, it would say, he would say, I'm a veteran, you know, they proud, like proud, proud of their veteran service. Yet here they are on the end of a highway, a street, your street, suburb, downtown, Hagerstown, Eastern Shore, and places all over 
the state that I've been, and I try to, I pride myself on how much I travel. So that yeah. person with that sign who's in need, who's hurting, who's at the end of a freeway in Florida, I'm, th- I'm literally saying to you places I've been where I've grabbed the bottle of water, whatever is in the car, you know what I mean? Um, that person that served our country, how does that person connect to you? And a lot of us would say, what's that person doing at the corner if they served our country in Afghanistan, Vietnam, wherever it would be through the, through the ages of military here? How how do you find them and how do they find you? Absolutely. Yeah. So two words should never go to, together, and that's homeless veteran. Mm-hmm. And we ask any veteran to connect with their near VA, whether it's Florida, Arizona, yeah. California, and the veteran will go from VA to VA being transferred until you get close to Maryland. Or once you arrive at the Maryland VA, call a place called McVet. We have transportation and we'll be picking up that veteran to provide transitional housing as well as supportive services. And, and Nestor, you can tell anybody that's, that's underneath your, your listening ear that if they see a veteran that's holding that sign, you know, you can call 410-576-9626 and we'll send a van to go get them right where they are. Correct. And All then, we need to know is- That's that amazing. I mean, that's truly amazing. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Well, you know, that, that's, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, Adabali, for, for you being, being a veteran and- mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure this happens every day in your world, right? Like this, this sounds outrageous to some degree, but we've all seen a veteran with a sign. There's no one in my audience that's immune to that, right? Um, so when this person, the van comes and this person, you find this person, I, the, the wide range of physical, emotional, psychological, uh, spiritual, financial, clearly financial, let's start with that, right? That That, right. that you find... I don't want to say broken individuals, but certainly individuals in need, right? Mm-hmm. When they find you and, and someone who's been where, what do you say to them as a veteran who went well, through first, camp, who served, who was sent places may, maybe many years ago, maybe in some ways that didn't really serve them for the rest of their life? Right. Well, the first thing for us is to understand who it is we're talking to. Right. So when you gave the intro, you talked about your family members that have served and having a Vietnam era veteran, just knowing and understanding as a veteran centric organization. The first thing that you always want to say to a Vietnam era veteran is that first welcome home. Thank you for your service and welcome home because they didn't get that hero's welcome that they deserved when they came back from the Vietnam era war. So that's important to know. So when you intersect that veteran in that space, you let them know that you're coming to McVet as a safe haven and a home. And we're going to give you all of the resources you need to get you back on your feet. And that's the reason we're one of the we're one of the only militarily structured organizations in the city. Just because when you come in, the first thing that you're going to do is, is coming through our doors is you're going to go into what you would kind of recognize as like a first platoon. You'll see something from a time in your life when you knew you were successful. So you'll see the bunks. You'll see the foot lockers. You'll see the wall lockers. You will see, you know, chow at a regular time. And so we'll make sure. These are positive you- anchors, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So we can start where we start, right? Identifying a time where you know that I get it because the transition is tough. And a lot of people dismiss that, but it is tough coming from active duty into the civilian world again. And we're prideful. As veterans, we're prideful. Nobody wants to say that they don't have it all. So I'd rather stay outside and live underneath a bridge than admit that maybe I need the help. You know, so it's it's a tough transition. But once they know, they love it. All right, wherever we can go out, find them on the web. Very, very easy. McVet, M-C-V-E-T dot org. All the information's up here. The phone number, 576-9626, located right down in downtown Baltimore, but serving places, uh, you know, near and far. And Sarita, for you, in, in engagement, community, uh, events, things you try to do in regard to not just stimulating so that people in my audience or I would know when I'm inevitably in my car the next time somewhere in the world. And this happens because it's happened all too frequently that that this outreach is available and you say we get a van. I mean, that, that you, you must have an aorta and infrastructure there and a support system that kind of has to be around the clock. Right. Absolutely. Yes, I mean, that never closes. <laughs> We're open 24 seven. Yes, indeed. Well, tell me about what locally for, for you, other than raising funds, doing things, uh, and give me the government's involvement in this as well. I mean, obviously, these are people that have served the government. There's so much 
dare I say, red tape. You know, my wife's a 9-11 uh, survivor. She was a first responder in 9-11, got leukemia, all this stuff. She's in the 9-11 program. And and I know sometimes uh, any – that's something anytime. And I'm not anti-government. I'm one of the pro-government guys. I'm voting that way this month. I, I assure you. But th- there is some level of this can be difficult. And I know at every level of government, um, you know, putting aside veterans, just anything you need to pay your water bill, it feels daunting for people. And I would think for veterans trying to reach out to the government for help in some way. Um, I, I don't think that's ever easy. I'm sure for your organization, just trying to make this easy and spiritually right when people mm-hmm. do reach to mm-hmm. you in need. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So we do have government funding. We have uh, private funding. We also have funding through veteran organizations, strong funding through DAV, American Legions, veterans support veterans. Everybody knows a veteran, everybody who wants to help assist a homeless veteran. And our overall mission, once you come to McVet, you, we don't say homeless veterans here, we say students, you become that productive citizen again. We have a dynamic workforce development program that Mr. Buford re-implemented and we, we are making some strides. Employers see what we're doing here at McVet. Our veterans are transitioning into full-time employment. They're getting their own houses, their own apartments. Mm-hmm. It's just absolutely dynamic. It's very rewarding for me as well to see a veteran come in almost broken and see a veteran leave out, head up, fully employed and ready to go. And we have an alumni association. So once our veterans come through our program, they finish our program, it's about giving back to their fellow veterans as well. I mean, I sat here and talked sports all these years, and I'd bring organizations in here and again. And, you know, yeah. turn the thing around, just people like you that that dedicate yourselves to doing this kind of work, obviously, after yeah. serving folks. Uh, Adabali Buford's here. He is the interim. Ex- so I'm going to give you the interim executive director. Serena Spencer here as well uh, from mcvet.org. You can find them, mcvet.org. Um, Adabali, for you, an in interim and coming in and reinstituting mm-hmm. plans. I mean, the overall vision of this, we're now three sure. three decades into this, right, for your organization. Sure. Yes. And yes. I mean, there wasn't even an internet in the beginning, right? And job <laughs> skills. Right. And I talked right. to my, my friends at Goodwill, who were one of our great sponsors yeah. here about jobs programs and, and workforce yeah. development. That means mm-hmm. so much. I mean, I'm an East Baltimore guy, right? Over in my, in my side of town, I was going to be a steel worker. I was going to work at, 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 the, uh, at the auto plant, right? And yeah. Life changes. When I talk about Trade Point Atlantic, these jobs that come online now are different kinds of jobs than even like an old fart like me might be skilled to, but they do involve um, they, they involve new world skills that sure. maybe, you know, if even 70, 75 years old, maybe Vietnam veteran like my father in law, right. uh, yeah. I mean, incredible uh, value to give back once a new skill can be learned, right? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And and Nestor, you, you hit it right on the head because the first thing we did is we kind of structured the programming around just that. So we train in about five, four, four vocational areas right now. We train in culinary arts, information technology, automotive technician training, and community health work. We built our platforming on a couple of uh, key components, right? Workforce development is a key phase of our programming. Case management is an important important phase of our programming. There's the actual voca- vocational training and then the follow-up phase. So in all of that, our programs are 12 to 15 weeks in length. You go through 12 to 15 weeks of workforce development, but what makes this kind of like the secret sauce, if you will, is making sure that you partner with strong anchor employers yes. that are willing to partner with you to take those graduates who have re- received those industry-recognized certifications right into work and they get a chance to see them along in the process to kind of make sure that they know what the expectation is on both sides of the coin. So we take the employer and the employee, merge those together, give them a skill that they can function with, give them an opportunity to get all of those credentials and then we just transition right in and we make a push and we've had really good partnerships with that. Uh, So, you know, between our, we've got a good strong partnership with the VA and the state uh, supplemental nutrition assistance program, SNAP program, we've got good partnering to make those things happen. The so fiber optic partnership yeah. recently. Yes. Yeah, we've got well, the IT to- part of it. I mean, I talk about this all the time yes. of technology coming online and, uh, and, and how we need to educate folks. And, uh, but certainly for you guys. So in, in our audience right now, other than write a check, is there, are there events or there fundraisers? 
Serena, tell me a little bit more about what oh, yes. our folks can do now that they're aware of what, and everybody's aware of a veteran and probably at some point in their life will come along a veteran in need. Absolutely. So our upcoming fundraiser is our third annual virtual event. It's our Veterans Day event, November the 11th, and it's $35 to participate. And you say, what's a virtual race? Prior to COVID, we had an in-person event for the last 25 years. Yes. When COVID affected the world, we had to regroup, still make uh, raise money for our organization, and we had to go virtual. Mm -hmm. So we had the same sponsorships, the same participants fund McVet. So for $35, NAST, you could go to our website, www.mcvet.org. You could register, you could create a team, and we have corporate sponsors who are donating thousands of dollars to support our homeless veterans at McVet. It's simple. Well, I'm up on the website right now. You can get there at mcvet.org. It's McVet. They are local. Adabali, uh, Buford is the uh, interim. Give me the interim thing, Listen. stepping into this role. We all take in at some point. <laughs> Give me your background, a little bit about getting involved in this, and 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 tell me about your service a little bit. Yes, sir. So I I, I was an Army vet. So I had four years of high school ROTC, four years of college ROTC. Um, reserve, active duty training. So I've always been military to the bone, right? From the time that I was 12 years old, right? I was Army Army veteran. Um, 91 Quebec Y7 is my designation. So I was pharmacy during the time that I was live, right? So I got into the business world, Ness, and I kind of figured out that I had this thing that just wouldn't quit, right? This veteran thing that wouldn't quit. But my business background always allowed me to grow and develop, right? I was really good with strategy and growing and develop. So when I intersected McVet, I couldn't believe that there's actually a place where a veteran can go, have no money, just walk through the doors and say, I need. And I thought it couldn't be a better space in place for me to go into. Okay. So I started here and uh, as like an employee specialist and doing workforce development. And it's about, I don't know, seven years ago, eight years ago. And so as I started to kind of matriculate up through and then I went off, I left McVet for about three years. Two, you came back. Two, 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 two years, yeah. right. Then I came back. <laughs> And Dude. helped us launch another platform. We started to go and grow and go and grow. And I found out that just like most employees here, you'll find out that McVet kind of gets in your blood. And so the interim is a very short thing for a very short period of time. And we're going to get this thing out of the way so we can make sure that we're here for the long term because it gets in your blood. And so my background has pretty much been, you know, all veterans, all business my whole life. And so for me, this was kind of a natural fit for me. Well, I'll tell you what, you guys are uh, putting people to work in our community. I see the help wanted signs up. We're trying to rebuild parts of the yes, community. Sir. That's okay. Uh, we're all going to step up. We're all in it together. That's what we're trying to do around here. Get out to McVet. Uh, help them out if you can. And obviously, uh, the virtual event, November 11th, correct? Yes. Yes, Veterans and Day. And if we have any employers interested in hiring our veterans, please contact us directly. Nice. All right. Well, thank you for yes. your time today. Thanks for coming on and educating me right around the corner. Yes. downtown High Street, man, you're really close to Amici's. I've gained a little bit of weight yes. down there off of Fayette. Yes. I mean, Listen. you got to go pay it past Patisserie Poupon uh, as Listen. well to get over there. You got all so, that good eating in East Baltimore. So now. we're right. on we're on North High, Little okay. Italy, South High. So we're closer to the main post office and we're right off of Gay Street. You're right by the UA house. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I had I, I had I had the great Thomas Dolby on, who's going to be performing the songs of David Bowie down in Ramshead <laughs> and setting up the music inside the Under Armour house with our friends over at Living Classroom. So we appreciate yes, you guys. Right Thanks right for coming on. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Have us back on for some sports talk. You know, we're all in for that. You come on down for a meal and get us on for some sports talk. We'd love oh, to do it. Well, you know what? Uh, next year's Orioles season is going to be good. The Ravens are already spicy around here. Say. Got the NBA, NHL starting. The college hoops is getting ready to go. So, yeah, well, I'm ready. I'm ready for yes. you, Adabali. Just bring us on. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Adabali, Buford, and Sarita Spencer joining us here from mcvet.org. That's mcvet.org, uh, helping veterans here locally uh, right down on the north side of High Street. And I know this, right. it's easy to walk. It's six blocks. You go yes. past Atman's there. You're right around the corner from all that good there stuff down is. there. <laughs> that makes me pull up and get fat when I'm pulling into downtown. I am Nestor. Don't start me on Iron Bird either. You're only about eight blocks from there. We are <laughs> WNST, AM 1570, Towson, uh, Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking um, Baltimore positive.